first person shooting and a shotgun go hand in hand. In a video game genre which is all about putting you inside the head of someone else, using a weapon that forces you to get as close to your enemy as possible before firing encapsulates everything that makes these kind of games so great. Throughout the mid to late 90s and the early 2000s, the shotgun was a staple of FPS games and you'd honestly be hard pressed to find a game that didn't include a shotgun in some form. I think if you track it all back, it probably got its popularity from the original Doom and from then on, the shotgun was usually the go-to weapon for players, often binded to number 3 on the keyboard by default right after some kind of starting pistol. Of course, not all shotguns are created equal and some are greater than others, so let's take a look at what I think are 7 of the best shotguns in FPS games throughout the years. As a fun little side project, see if you can count how many times the word shotgun is said in this video. I'll even help you out, I've said it 6 times already. Having said that, Sunny Jims, let's get into it. Now though it's not a shotgun in the traditional sense, the flak cannon does however incorporate all the elements of a shotgun, including the need to be fired at close or medium range and the fact that it fires out a spreader projectile similar to the pellets in a shotgun shell. Not even close. Seen in every Unreal game since Unreal 1 and throughout all the various Unreal tournaments, the flak cannon fires out a burst of shrapnel that can kill enemies in one or two hits at close range, depending on how much health or armor they happen to have. Double kill. Its design has been through numerous changes throughout the course of the series, but it's always had a very similar looking yellow colour palette, making it instantly identifiable when picked up. Also, it had quite a recognisable sound when being fired, and you knew that if you heard that sound nearby, you'd want to make sure you didn't get too close to anyone who had it equipped, or else you might find yourself respawning before you even know what hit you. Hands down, it's probably my favourite weapon in the entire series, and each iteration of the flak cannon in whichever game I happen to be playing is generally my go-to gun if the situation allows it. Obviously it's not all that good from long distances, but during the smaller maps that facilitated shooting people in the face at close range, it was unrivaled. Okay, so this one is kind of a given, and to be honest, I'm only really including it because if I don't, I can imagine the kind of backlash I'd be getting. I've included the Super Shotgun instead of the original shotgun because I always viewed the original shotgun as more workhorse than anything else. I mean, it became such commonplace in the original Doom that it kind of lost its luster a little bit, and the fact that it was so efficient and effective at killing most enemies made it feel routine. Honestly, it can't really compare to the utter destruction caused by other shotguns we're going to be talking about. It's also for similar reasons I didn't include the shotguns from Quake 1 and Quake 2 as well. Anyway, when the Super Shotgun was introduced in Doom 2, however, it definitely left its mark. Obviously, using twice the amount of ammunition per shot, it also compensated for this by doing a hell of a lot more damage against enemies. Tougher enemies like Cacodemons could be taken down in mere hits, and the Pinky Demons and Imps would barely survive a single blast. If used correctly, it could take out large clumps of shotgun sergeants and zombie marines, making it useful for crowd control. As Samuel L. Jackson said in Jackie Brown, when you absolutely positively have to kill every motherfucker in the room, accept no substitutes. It's one of the new inclusions that defines Doom 2, and it's easily one of the best weapons in Doom Guy's arsenal, and it was equally as awesome in the new reboot as well. Now people can argue about which Halo game is the best until they bleed from their assholes, but one thing the series has undeniably done quite well is keep the feel of the weapons consistent throughout each installment. With the inclusion of the iconic assault rifle, the M6 pistol to the M90 shotgun, which in one form or another have been in every single Halo game ever made. Personally, I enjoyed the M90 the most in the first and second game, where it would usually kill most enemies in a couple of hits, if not just a single hit, and it had a comically large circular crosshair that took up way more space than it really needed to. It would be put to best use during the repetitive library chapter in Halo Combat Evolve, where it made short work of the flood enemies with little trouble, but just in general, this thing could do a hell of a lot of damage in a very short period of time. And it also forced the play to be a lot more aggressive and close the distance towards the enemies due to the shotgun's somewhat limited range. I'll agree it's not the best weapon in Master Chief's lineup, but when you got your hands on this thing, you knew shit was about to get real. Ready Realm's 1997 FPS Shadow Warrior was a gloriously tongue-in-cheek shooting game where you played as Lo Wang, the eponymous Shadow Warrior who used a sword, fists and Uzis amongst other things to kill ninjas and demons. You look like a stupid. The entire lineup of weapons in this game is incredible, but one that really stood out was the awesome riot gun. 
What appeared to be a minigun at first glance was actually a four barrel shotgun capable of firing at full order, sending out four quick blasts in succession. Now it took a bit of time to get the hang of this thing and you really needed to be pretty close to what you were shooting at for it to be all that much use, but god damn son, did this thing feel good to fire. Unleashing all four barrels resulted in visible recoil as the weapon would kick into the air with each shot fired. Against a lot of Shadow Warriors more melee orientated enemies it got put to extremely good use, but it also found its use against pretty much every other enemy type in the game. Bonsai and D. I was adamant about only including one build engine game in this video, but I couldn't help including the shotgun from Blood when I started thinking about entries to add to this list. Well, it's technically a sort off shotgun if you want to be a pedantic prick, but it's a shotgun all the same. What I think made the sort off so much fun was that you were given the ability to either fire one barrel at a time or unload both at once, and firing both barrels simultaneously felt infinitely better than just firing off one at a time. The reload time regardless of the firing mode was super quick, making it brutally effective against the vast majority of enemy types in the game. Even against the tougher enemies like the gargoyles, it proved to be an efficient tool. Firing at point blank range against zombies or the cabal cultists would generally always kill them in one hit, sending them flying backwards, often removing their head from its torso in the case of the zombies and leaving a nice little trail of blood across the ground to wherever it was they landed. When you got your hands in the akimbo power-up, allowing you to temporarily dual wield weapons, unloading four barrels at once made you feel like death on two legs, and the only thing holding you back at this point would be your rapidly dwindling supply of shotgun shells. It pains me every day that this game doesn't have the recognition it deserves anymore, and those folks who played it are probably going to agree that whilst it's not the best weapon in the game, when compared to other FPS shotguns, Blood Sword Off Shotgun is easily up there with the best of them. Soldier of Fortune 1 and 2 are vastly different games. The first one was a textbook run and gun shooter where you would murder dozens of bad guys in a single level without barely having to take your finger off whatever walk forward was binded to. It was more like an 80s or 90s action movie than any kind of military simulator. With the second game, however, they scaled things back a fair bit, adding in shooter realistic handling for weapons, forcing the player to fire in short controlled bursts even forcing you to crouch and stand still to improve your accuracy. One thing that was consistent across both games, however, is the sheer awesomeness of the game's shotguns, particularly the Spaz-12 in the first game and the Mossberg 590 in the second. In the first game's first level, where you're taking out terrorists in the New York City subway, you'll notice the ease in which the shotgun can remove limbs from whoever you're shooting at. You don't even really need to fire with all that much accuracy, I mean the spread is just ludicrous, and even from distances you think would be ineffective, the shotgun still has the power behind it to turn an enemy's arms or legs into bloody stumps. Similarly in the second game during the prologue mission in Prague, you're given the Mossberg from the get go, and with the new and improved ghoul damage system, you'll marvel at how it can leave enemies with gory chunks where body parts used to be. In all honesty, pretty much all the guns in both these games are amazing, but there's just something so unreal about letting loose with the shotguns at close range, and it truly epitomizes the level of violence and gore that both of those games are known for. Now I know there's another shotgun in the second game, but the fact that thing is firing in full auto makes it feel less rugged than a pump action shotgun does, so I didn't include it in the list. I'll admit too I should probably have these games under two separate entries, but I find it hard to pick a favourite shotgun between the two, and deciding on my favourite between each game is like asking me if I prefer socks on my left or right foot. Which brings us on to what I think is the best FPS shotgun of all time, and that's the VK-12 shotgun in Fear. The Fear series is still one of the most over-the-top shooting games ever made, even 10 years after its initial release. Taking influence from John Woo films and Japanese horror, it was a game where you controlled the Point Man, a super soldier with inhuman reflexes which equated into a slow motion ability in the game. Yeah, look, we'd seen this before already in Max Payne and the Matrix films, but this was the first FPS game to pull it off so well. 
Yes, Sunny Jim, I'm aware that the FPS game Chaser included a slow motion ability two years before Fear even got on the scene, but that game's horrible. Turning on slow motion and taking out half a dozen bad guys never got old, and every single weapon available to the player was really useful, especially the shotgun. Modelled again after a Spaz 12, it's one of the most noteworthy weapons in the game because of how utterly destructive it could be when used in close quarters. I gotta say, there's few things in shooting games as cathartic as letting rip with fierce shotgun in slow motion at point blank range. From the moment you first get this gun, it should be in one of your three weapon slots for the remainder of the game, and if it's not, I gotta say you're playing the game incorrectly. Even when you're taking on some of the toughest enemies in the game, it still manages to tank them down in a few hits. Against the cookie cutter replica soldiers, it's almost always a one hit kill, often turning them into a shower of red mist if you're lucky. It almost feels overpowered in a sense because it can literally make you unstoppable if you're using it properly, but that just kind of adds to how fun it is. The shotgun would return in the second and third game, but it seemed with each new installment it got more and more watered down. So not only do I think the VK-12 is the best weapon in the entire series, but I genuinely think it's the best shotgun in any single FPS game ever. So that's it for my list of top 7 shotguns. I know there's probably a fair few guns that could have made this list, and the wonderful thing about the internet is that there's never any shortage of people telling you just how wrong your opinion is and correcting you as they see fit. Honorable mentions go to the Bone Duster Shotgun in Bulletstorm and the Automatic Shotgun in Wolfenstein The New Order and The Old Blood. On that note, I'm all for friendly discussion over what other shotguns could have made this list, so drop a comment in the comment section below if you think I've left one out. Even if you think I'm a stupid asshole who couldn't find his ass with both hands in a map, leave it down below. Finally, if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, be sure to leave a comment as well with your idea and I'll do my best to reply to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>